Mickey, obviously you and Dabo shared a lot of things. What are your memories of the Sugar Bowl? Well, my biggest memory is is I've run down on the kickoff and <laughs> I'm chasing Kevin Williams all around the field. He runs out of bounds and I'm getting ready to come off the field and, and got laid out, late hit, four stitches in my chin. Oh gosh. Knocked a tooth out in the back of my mouth and chipped another one. Uh, I remember waking up to Eric Curry and John Copeland standing over me trying to help me up and get off the field. And then, uh, you know, Coach Mack, Coach McDonald taking my helmet, not letting me go back in the game. I remember all that. Uh, I remember the excitement and, you know, the build up to the game and just, you know, just what a special, what a special night it was. And winning a national championship at Alabama, not done that since 1979. And, you know, we kind of, we brought it back with Coach Stallings and Coach Oliver and I remember Coach Oliver's defense that night was just we had a great plan and did not give up we did not give up a defensive touchdown that night they returned a punt and then kicked two field goals I remember the field goal kicker was actually from here at Trustful if I remember right they kicked the two field goals he was he was a Bama boys it was a Bama night how special is it for you and Dabo the Bama guys to be now doing similar things here at Clemson I think it's incredible Coach Sweeney has you know it's like it's like Coach Stallings and Coach Bryant just speaking through him every day, the message and the things that he says over and over again. It just brings back old memories. And us as teammates, it just makes it fun, makes it fun. But the way he, the way Coach Sweeney has this program going and Clemson and the fans and, and the, whole, the whole thing is just unbelievable. The excitement and the enthusiasm, uh, it's just really remarkable. The way the Clemson Nation is is really rallied around Coach Sweeney, and the way he's he's built his his staff, and the way he talks to his team, he's such a uh, people person. And uh, you know what you see is is really him. I mean, that's really who he is. He's so giving. I don't think I've ever been around a more giving person than Coach Sweeney. A lot of coaches are making that move now from you know top high school program to the college level mm -hmm. what's that transition been like for you you know what it's been great for me it wasn't it wasn't really something i set out to do you know uh, after i finished as a graduate assistant in alabama i was you know I, I had an opportunity to go back and coach high school ball and that's kind of where i thought god was leading me and, and where i ended up and uh, <clears throat> you know i had a lot of success there at grayson when i left it was the number one program in the country mm -hmm. and uh driving home from baseball practice with my son and all of a sudden Coach Sweeney's on the phone and offered me this position and I was, you know, talked to my wife, talked to my family and said, well, you know what, we'll try it and mm -hmm. see how, you know, see how it goes. But uh, it's, been a great tra it's been a great transition for me mm -hmm. and my family. It's been different. I'm learning a lot. Mm -hmm. Coach Ven I'm coaching on defense, so Coach right. Venables has been, you know, there's not a better defensive mm -hmm. coach in the country than, than Brent Venables and I've learned a ton from him and and just growing and stretching every day. How do you think your ties in Atlanta are helping on the recruiting front? Well, hopefully it'll help a lot. You know, I, I have an inroads in there with the coaches. Uh, I, I really enjoy going to the Atlanta area and Gwinnett County in particular and seeing a lot of my coaching friends and guys that I've competed against or with. And it, you know, How do they treat you coming in as a probably, coach versus an opponent? They, they probably treat me a little better. <laughs> Probably do. No, they treat me the same. You know, those guys are, there's so many good coaches out mm -hmm. there. High school, college, there's so many good coaches out there. And I just, I love sitting there talking with them, learning football from them, and, you know, hopefully can can get a player from, from them every now and then, too. So hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll help. Well, we went down and saw uh, Kyler play as part of our tour champions mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. What kind of players Clemson getting in him? Yeah, unbelievable talent. Unbelievable talent. And he can he can do so many different things. He'll be playing corner for us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're getting a, a truly, a, number one, a great competitor. Uh, maybe number one, even a better person. Mm -hmm. And But his talent level is just, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be unbelievable how good he can be. He's extremely fast. He's big. He's physical. You're talking about a guy that's about 6'2", you know, 205 pounds, and playing corner and can play. And he's got the hips and the speed and the change of direction to do it. His parents told us we went out of in home with them a few weeks ago. They talked about the first time he came to camp. Couldn't afford to go to three day. You know, he's going to camp everywhere. Went for Dab or Clemson talked him in coming down for a half day camp, one day camp. Said he left that day and he said. Mom, Dad, here's where I'm going. What does that 
what, what, what's that like, and how do you hang on to a guy like that well, from that euphoria? Let me start with the camp, okay, because that's, that's Coach Sweeney's baby right there. And he, we don't, you know, and as a high school coach, I appreciate the way he does it because he doesn't bring guys in there in T-shirts and put a number on them mm -hmm. and run them through 40s mm -hmm. and run them through shuttle runs and then send them home. Mm -hmm. I mean, even those guys that come for half a day, they're doing, they're doing drill work, football work. They're doing individual. They're doing man-to-man. -man, mm -hmm. They're doing all football-related skill work. It's not a, uh, you know, it's not a combine camp. And Dabo's out there. He's showing these kids how we coach and how we do things on a daily basis. And to me, you know, investing in all the kids, you know, not just the not just the prospects, right. but all the kids are getting taught football, and I think that's the biggest difference when you compare it to everybody else. Everybody else is kind of a meat market of getting, the, trying to find players to sign. Where where he does it just like he coaches his team. He's there to develop whatever kid shows up, mm -hmm. and you know whether they're a prospect or not a prospect. His expectation for me and all of our coaches. Is to coach them like well, the same with the youth camp too, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. The youth camp, little kids, yep. big kids, and in fact, we we switch them field to field, mm -hmm. you know, of who they're getting coached by. Mm -hmm. you know, we may have GAs and student assistants on one field and position coaches on another, and then and then we flip them, and you know, so they're getting a lot of good coaching, a lot of good teaching, and in Kyler's case. You know, you see a guy like that, he really stands out mm -hmm. as a player. You say, oh, my gosh, you know, this guy, he can do more than just run a 40. You know, he can cover. He can, he can do a lot of things.